All right. Um, hey, Terry, have you heard of gray matter before? Mm. Don't know. So my, my buddy just sold his shares for like 5,000 bucks. It's pretty good money, I guess. But the company's like selling for like, like at least 20 times that much. Like what was your, what, if you got bought out of a company, how much would you go for? Mm. I don't know how much you got on you. I got a 20. I retire. I can build an empire with that. All right. Well, I seem to have misplaced my wallet. I'll have to give you an IOU this time. But we're back with the Almost Sideshow. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Adam. That is Terry. <laughs> IOUs, LVP. But don't underestimate the IOUs or a special little special hidden note that you leave for the DEA. We'll talk about that today. Uh, yes. Uh, this is a great, this is a fun episode. This episode is episode six of season five. And this uh, is called buyout. Breakdown down aired, breaking bad. I, I was almost there. I was almost there. August 19th, 2012 is when this was aired. And of course we have to break down breaking bad today. So there we go. It's a little out of place, but Breakdown, we got there. Breaking Bad. We got, we got it again. Yeah. You can never go wrong with that that Come awesome on. line. Tight, 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 yeah. And of course, Tuco it will be joining us along the way, as he Always. should. Always. Always. And forever. Uh, this is a fun episode, Terry. Uh, buyouts, man. Uh, this was a very intriguing episode. Obviously, we had the aftermath from Dead Freight, which our good buddy Zach Salt was on. Uh, he was not dead freight. He was actually really good, enthusiastic freight on that episode. Very uh, enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic. He never listened to us before, but he may not listen. What's <laughs> still the hasn't. He still hasn't. But uh, anyway, uh, Bob out, Terry. That what? Uh, for, for, give me an initial thought. What's your take on this episode? Do you remember this episode back when you originally watched it? Well, it has um, like every episode seems to have like one of those scenes that you're just like, oh, it's that oh, episode. It's one of the great. And for me, this 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 is this is the dinner episode. So, oh, yeah, I gotcha. Uh, that's that's really the takeaway. So let's let's break this down. And this we'll, is definitely we'll really get into it. Yeah, this is cool. The, the dinner. We'll talk about it. The dinner scene we'll would definitely be like a top five pick. It has to be one of the top, top. I don't know the rest of the show, but it would be my one of my top five picks. Oh yeah, it's it's an all timer. It's an all timer. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Our synopsis of Breaking Bad season five, episode six. It is entitled "Buyout." How do we recover from a successful heist that ended in tragedy? Well, first, destroy the evidence. Our boys have experience with that. Then decide do. what to do with Todd who claims he saw no other way than doing what he did. Do they fire him? Do they kill him? Nope. They keep him, and they keep an eye on him. Jesse is struggling with the guilt of a kid dying under his watch, while Mike is struggling with the DEA tailing him wherever he goes. It leads to a difficult decision for both Mike and Jesse. They're out. However, they're not out without wanting their cut of the methylamine they just stole. Mm -hmm. Mike has a buyer for it. Give them $5 million each. Walt is seeing his empire building slipping through his fingers, which he tells Jesse when he stays for the most awkward dinner party ever. As Skylar continues to feel like a prisoner to her own life choices, and also now knows that Walt told Marie about her sleeping with Ted. Anyways, Walt reluctantly agrees to let Mike and Jesse have their share of the methylamine, but the buyer wants all of it to guarantee the blue stuff is off the market for good. Walt won't agree to that, so Mike tries to make him agree. Then, while Mike is having Saul put a restraining order on the DEA for stalking him, Walt escapes, steals the methylamine, and reveals he has a plan where everybody gets what they want. What is his plan? Stay tuned. The good old TBC. Done. To be done, continued. Done. All right, Adam. What'd you think? Oh, this was uh, this is clearly the dinner episode here, folks. Uh, no other Albertsons will serve you great green beans and a steak 
like that. I I was like, man, that was a really fast. She really really whipped that up in a hurry. Uh, oh wait, it's Albertson's special. Uh, but damn, that's some good quality looking food. It made me really hungry, and that was some of the best acting I've ever seen. <laughs> Jesse, Aaron, Paul, uh, just giving out a great like most awkward dinner vibes ever, and I was all for it. Even my wife's like, this is awkward talking. <laughs> We're talking now. <laughs> oh, it was it's great. Yeah. Just stuff in his face with green beans t- st- causing small talk. These and... are choice. Yeah, these are choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it. Uh, that's a great scene. But we also are surrounded with some other good moments here as well. We need to figure out what to do with Todd. We'll keep him around. We'll keep an eye on him. You, you're free to go. Go ahead. We'll keep an eye on you, though. Just don't go anywhere. That, that was kind of funny. He has not, really after, cool... not before he gets a black guy from Jesse, though. That is true. He has a really cool car. Uh, definitely a top fiver of a car in this in this show. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's that was cool. The sad with the the opening when they're trying to cut up the bike and in the course that you see the dead hand as well. Uh, at this point, though, it seems like oh, they have. They're like a one trick pony. There's only one way to dispose of a body. It's the most effective way, of course, but, and now they have mastered it. So it, it kind of comes off stale a little bit, uh, though, though it's su- still super effective. I don't buy that. They put all that bike in that one container though. That whole bike did not fit in that container. <laughs> uh, so there's probably more, I don't know. Uh, but, but they that, had to cut it up though. So I they mean, did. It, it fit. It's, it fit. it's possible. It tracks, uh, mm-hmm. but still really like how it was filmed. It was, you feel the kind of the weight of it. And it's very clear that Jesse had wanted no part of that. Like he was like, Nope, I'm not going to be in there in that spot, which I thought was, but he was still there. He was just out smoking, uh, doing, getting his mind off of it. Uh, so that was, I was, I wouldn't expect anything else from Jesse on that one. So I, I like that. Uh, the, interesting scene when they actually do the fine drew i i have hashtag fine drew if you're listening at home on mine and terry originally was like wait what's this just that little sequence is where they couldn't find the kid whose name was drew mm-hmm. and uh you know they, you feel that weight and of course oh, the most chilling whistle yeah, well, it's not the end he wasn't whistling any griffith but at the same time I don't uh, think you was, were either. I was. Maybe. <laughs> I, in my head, I was. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, it, it was a chilling whistle, and it, it proves that Walt don't give an F. Like, he, it's nothing's bothering him. Heisenberg is, he's Heisenberg. We all, we've been talking about this for weeks now, at least six episodes at this point. Uh, funny enough, the show don't know who Heisenberg is. It's clearly Fring's blue stuff. The show don't even know who Heisenberg is. People around in this universe don't know. It's it's Gus Fring. You haven't made a name for yourself, uh, Heisenberg. You think you're like this tough guy and this big guy. I thought Heisenberg was Gail Bedecker. Yeah, that that is true. I th- I thought he was in jail like a long time ago. That, well, yeah, uh, but was it Tommy Two Timer or whatever his yeah. name was? <laughs> yeah, Tommy Two Timer. Uh, but yeah, that that's uh, it's 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 a fun episode. I think there's some interesting things to discuss in here, and it's good to kind of see all our players doing things, even though Walter Jr. did not appear. Flynn, we don't see much of Flynn the, these days because he has that car. Mm-hmm. So oh, see a little bit of everybody but him and Huel. Yes, no Huel. He was probably taking a nap, either that or on a toilet. Um, yeah, this was th- this is a perfect example of what makes breaking bad so good like last episode was the the action episode and this episode is this fallout from it mm-hmm. but every part of it like it, it's still not reaching like the intensity of of what was going on in season four but i i was going like we start with best scene and i would just started going through them like i wrote down like five or six scenes because Every scene right now is just so good and so packed with so much stuff. Um, Obviously, the non-negotiable is the dinner scene, but that's yeah. clear. But there, you're right. There are so many good, like good things to unwrap in this this, this episode. And and just just the character building moments that we have. I was actually talking to Todd 
Um, and uh, hi, Todd. And, How you yeah, doing? I was, I was getting there. I was getting there. It's it's here somewhere there. Hi, Todd. How you doing? There we go. Yeah, and um, oh boy, oh boy. Um, so I was talking to him, and one of the critiques he had of our slideshow is we are spending too much time focusing big picture and not enough time like thinking about just how good each moment of these episodes are. And and I think this this episode is a perfect example of that because yeah. um yeah it, it's it's hard to scale it back down after what happened in season four. And you want to know all right where is this heading? We're in the final season there's gonna be an end in sight at some point. But don't look past the fact that these episodes are packed with just like perfect moments. And and the, the dinner scene is such a is such a standout, but it also can overshadow some other really great moments. And um and, and we'll get we'll get into all of them, but but yeah, it's just it's this is just such a good episode from start to finish. And it ends by we don't, haven't had it many cliffhangers quite like this cliffhanger in a while. And so uh, I think that's another big takeaway from this episode is you just kind of leave it at, at a, all right, well, what are we going to do? Fade to black. And uh, it, it's, it's going to be, it, I don't fully remember where it goes from here. I know a little bit of where it goes from here. Um, we only have two episodes left in this first half of the season because the season was split into two eight episode parts. So, um, so there's there is a natural break coming at the end of episode eight, which is going to kind of feel like an end of a partial season. So you have some sort of finality coming soon, too. So like finality, thinking, what thinking macro. So like thinking, okay. thinking macro, you've got all, a whole lot of stuff that that's kind of all starting to get put itself in a place to see where the plot is going. But at the same time, thinking micro, thinking just this episode, there's so many good things that are happening, and so much fun stuff that we can unpack here. Well, you were saying a lot of stuff, and the only thing I can keep like, focused on was Todd uh, calling us out. Be on the show I more. Call this out. Let's talk. About, let's let's be on the show more. Let's go. Obviously, I agree. Uh, but no, but <laughs> but I guess in a way that he absolutely is right. Where we we do start so big picture on things. I know I'm guilty of that for sure. Uh, but at the same time, you're absolutely right that there's so much smaller things to dissect. So I think going forward, we make a conscious effort that we don't get big picture until Adam, what the hell is going to happen next? That's where we get big picture. Okay. I'll, I'll do better about that as myself. Well, I'll keep and, myself and it's, it, it kind of naturally happens, but it's a good thought. Yeah. It's a good thought. <laughs> Thanks Todd. I, I'm, um, I'm just, I, I, just going through all of my uh, Todd sound bites here today. Uh, burning through. Bummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's some ones i haven't heard in a while yeah i know i know i got i gotta remember like oh man is that todd or is that zach i don't have them marked really well so that was a disaster yeah okay, that, well, that there we sense. go all anyway. right anyways so let's talk about let's talk about this dinner scene because we've mentioned yeah. it several times and there's so much to unpack with that scene um uh, my, I, I, my, love how, I love oh. how much walt just doesn't care anymore like just come over to the house really yeah it'll oh. be fine no one's here Nobody else's home and then she walks in. You remember Jesse? Like, yeah. What? <laughs> At first, it's like when he sits down, he's like, "We got Jesse. We got Jesse here." See, no one cares. You know, no, no, one, no one's even here. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jesse. We got Jesse over here. That's a, no that's cares. always a great scene to, to shout out when you get a chance to. I, I love that. That's one of yeah. my favorite. Uh, but yeah, that, it, it's great. And then like it just starts off soup. Hey, remember that guy I used to buy weed from? I'm Skylar. Uh, Skylar White, yo. Skylar White, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, all right. <laughs> and, and then um, I, I think I think it's getting a, into a little bit of what one of our midlife crisis moments might be, but not being able to handle the awkward silences and feeling the need to fill them. That is Jesse in this. Yeah. Scene, he's like, this is weird. I'm going to say something. Well, like he, he's great. the only one. <laughs> he, he's the only one somewhat being civil here. Um, the one that Skylar knows is the criminal and I think this is like the first time like confirmed moment Walt's been working with Jesse this entire time like I don't think Skylar knew that for sure That's until until that moment like she knew him from the beginning of he sells me pot 
and that's it. And and this is the first. I mean, I she may have heard his name after you know the whole Hank kicked the crap out of him thing. But this is like the first. Yeah, this is who I work with. Deal with it. He's staying for dinner. He's staying for dinner. I think this would also have been an interesting point for the first interaction with Walter Jr. If he would have showed up in that door, because Jesse and Walter Jr. have never been on screen together or even know each other. No. We may have to fact check that, but I, I'm pretty sure like that that is true. Uh, I think you're right. They've never that, been seen partners. Yeah. So I don't even think they really, they don't even know each other's names. So that would have been interesting. Uh, but the, this is uh, I, I'm kind of my midnight crisis in this sequence, too. Sometimes you just need good grocery store food, like pre-cooked food. It's like sometimes it's like, I don't feel like making dinner. You know what? Meat and potatoes, <laughs> Jojo's, some, <laughs> some chicken or whatever the case may be. Uh, however, sometimes... however, let's sh let, I, I got a shout out to my wife again. She noticed something in this in this scene when, when they're talking about that. And she goes, it's Albertson's from the deli. And she goes, yeah. Because Skylar never cooks. She <laughs> never cooks. If it, unless it's like scrambled eggs. Skylar doesn't cook. Walt cooks. Like Walt made one killer pot roast one night. Wait, so he cooks his own bacon? And then she cuts it up on... She, she makes those breakfasts. Like that's the only time we've ever seen her make a meal. My mind's blown right now. Actually, that's a pretty right? that's a pretty good analysis, Cassie. Why aren't you on our show? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's great. Uh, that's that, damn. That's a great point. That's a that's a really good point. That's good job. Wait, top kudos to Cassie, MVP. Right on that. Never would have thought about that. Actually, that's a, I hadn't I hadn't thought about that one either. And then she mentioned, like, oh, yeah, I like how impressive. we also get at the table. We get booked into the two alcoholics of the episode. Then we have one guy drinking water. Like it's totally bookend. <laughs> we got the champ, you know, pouring the glass, the champagne. It's not even empty yet. And then you got the one guy with his little whiskey, just like kind of stirring it, like in his hand. Uh, and then, yeah, that, I, I like that. And then like the awkwardly drinking water, like that. <laughs> it's it's good. It's it's like oh, you told kid. him about that, huh? Did you tell him about my affair too? <laughs> 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 No. Oh, oh, oh so Jesse. good. Poor, it's like it, poor it, Jesse. It, poor, have, have we? I mean, there are a lot of moments we feel sorry for Jesse in the show. Have we ever felt more sorry for Jesse than in that moment? I think we've all been in that moment too, because <laughs> we pretty much we know when our parents were fighting when we were kids. We're like, just remain quiet. But Jesse couldn't in that moment. Just remain quiet. Don't don't say anything. <laughs> and there, there's some tension in here. I don't know what it's from, but there's uh, some tension in here. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. It's good. There, there's so so many dynamics in that scene that are just awesome. And then oh. she just walks away with a bottle of wine. And that, that's just so good. Clutch. She never eats, apparently, either. It's just a full plate of food. That's true, too. She didn't touch her food. Okay. Any other scenes you want to you wanna shout out here? Yeah, let's go with the... Let's go with the, the, the scene where they are doing their cook. And obviously, there's the whistling. OK, mm, so. Before that, I was kind of in the point where I don't necessarily I, I still think eventually he's put Jesse's wheels are turning because he's clearly stops it for the whistle. And does he recognize the song that Walter is whistling or is it the action of Walter not really given enough? I think it's, it's I think it's the second one. But at the same time, as if he did, he, if he's heard the whistle before, did was it something that maybe Brock also whistled? And it's like, wait, maybe that's really pulling mm. at the streak. But I, I feel like eventually that does will happen. And again, we're not, I, we're, we're, I won't proceed on that anymore. But at the same time, is that that's a very key moment for Jesse's evolution, and probably at this point will be in two episodes. I'm gonna say episode eight is probably so that's where the, i think that's where we're gonna have a good break right there and then we'll figure out something there but again i don't i don't want to elaborate too fast it's not the time for that i, I uh, think that's a great I, scene. yeah i think it's more just i mean he just talked about how he's really broken up over the whole thing he's not gonna get any sleep, sleep at night yeah and then, just and, and then he immediately just goes back into the lab and is whistling away like it's the best day of his life he goes 
what what kind of monster am I working with now? I think that's really what's going on here, and that's what that's what Jesse sees in that moment. I don't think it has anything to do with the song. I could yeah, be I, wrong, but that that's how that's more how I interpret it. Yeah, and I I think that's just the right way to do it. I just I'm like I was trying to like what was he whistling like like that's kind of a, like just uh usually everybody has their like specific like song that they usually try to whistle maybe not successfully but at the same time they try to um so i was trying to piece that together but maybe it was just some kind of beat that walt would jingle on his head so but it's, it's a great scene there as well and then we get to find out like drew's parent he's been missing for four days we get another little time stamp on how far away we're, we've been to so mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Uh, another one I want to shout out. It's it's right before the dinner scene. It's the talk of Walt and Jesse in the Gray Matter in the Empire yep. Building, and and you you finally get a little a little insight into something that's been building in Walt the entire show. Show, yeah. Like the, this is this explains Walter White fully. Like that this is the full picture of Walter White here. This is why. He couldn't take the money from from uh, Elliot and Gretchen because that's not his money anymore. He he backed out, and every time he sees them, he thinks of how this could have been me, and it's not. And he and checks it, every day. He tells me he checks it every day. I think it was every week, but regardless, like he, he's a millionaire. Maybe, maybe, if he doesn't if, if he's a millionaire, if it doesn't become a love triangle, um, yeah. and. Uh, but it did. And then you've got and, and and just just that idea of this is why he's in this and this is why he wants to keep going in this. This is why he's not going to settle for five million because he wants to build his empire because he already lost out on one. And and he has two we've talked about, but he's got too much pride. He's got too much damn pride. And he has to he has to get something. He has to have his thing. And he missed out on one, and this could be his next thing, and he he can't miss it again. Mm -hmm. Is a meth empire a good thing, Mister White? Yeah, it's a, are we it's in a the meth one. business or are we in the money business? Money. I'm in the empire, empire business. business. Yeah, the, 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 like there's, and again, there's another sign. This is Heisenberg now. This is not Walter White. Yeah, um, did like there's no like Walter White. Was the one counting up all the estimates and figuring out he needed seven hundred thirty-seven thousand um, dollars. Heisenberg is saying five million isn't enough. I need millions upon millions. I need my empire. Yeah, it's very true. All right, I've got a couple more things I need to shout out. Yes, sir. Um, the the opening what to do with Todd scene. Mm. Um, just like the. First off, Todd trying to explain himself, which I think he does a great job at. Bizarrely calm during the whole thing. Um, He's done it before. The, 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 yeah, you, you get the idea. This is not his first rodeo. And and, and then he, he, you know, name checks some connections he has to prison. It's like this. Um, and, and Jesse is like, what the hell was that? And And Walt, once again, is the level-headed one and sits there and says, okay, there are three options. We fire him, which means we pay him off to keep quiet. We dispose of him, I think was the word that he used. Or we continue on business as usual. And there's really only one option. Because they're not just going to, you know, put him in the ground. They only do that when they absolutely have to. And so, um, and for some reason, he's kind of earned some trust too. So uh, he, he's, even if, even if they didn't like the decision, he's good in a pinch. He showed that. Yeah. Next time you bring a gun to, you let me know. You don't bring a gun unless I say so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, did you have any other scenes you wanted to shout out before we move on? No, I think we're good. Let's move on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Ken wins Bogdan douchebag of the episode goes to who, Adam? Walt, don't give a sh doesn't care anymore. He doesn't care. 
I'm trying to keep it somewhat PG. Uh, but yeah, Walt is the douchebag here. But we've said this, we've said it before. I, we're not going to say it again. The DEA is the clear douchebags of this episode here. Uh, stalking the poor senior citizen. Come on. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, stalking the, the poor man. Like he's just trying to watch his granddaughter play at the playground and have a nice you know, do his crossword, his Sudoku, possibly. Uh, the DA just needs to back off, man. He lost three tails this morning. Like, I wouldn't be here. He wouldn't be here right now if they were behind him. Uh, so, yeah, the DA. Just I've been doing him. this for a long time. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So I'm going to go kind of a similar route. I'm going to say the biggest douchebag is Mike. Mm, um, there you go. Perfect. Because for, for a couple reasons. One, the, the note he leaves behind is, is I mean, it's pretty great, but it's also like a douchey move, right? Like, like oh, like, man, you guys poor Gomi me. waited there forever. Yeah. And, and now I'm going to I'm going to make sure they don't follow me any further because I'm going to leave something behind for them to find. Um, but then just how he how he treats him wanting to leave and and uh yeah he says i'm out and he goes no no no, just listen to me he's like the last thing i need to do is be listening to you and uh like he's just so done which you don't blame him for but then you know zip tying him to a radiator um to keep him to keep him in place that there's there's some stuff that's just like, really? Why are we going? Uh, I don't know. Mike Mike always always kind of has the right thing to do, but at the same time, he kind of comes off a little douchey this time. And then the restraining order. I mean, it's pretty clutch, but it's also a douche move. It's <laughs> a good call. I like it. All right. The, the Pink Man, Stick Man Award goes to... I had a bad punnage, but I think those that that stick is getting kind of old because I, 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 I now I'll still say it. Mike's gun. It's going sideways to the Todd's ass if he brings another gun. So I think that's yeah, but we're, we're not doing that anymore. OK, uh, the, the stick man is Saul. OK, and I'll explain because he's a he's a uh, he's a snazzy dresser. Judge uh, Papadonian Domian thinks so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he he's looking good. Got to get those female judges. Where, where'd you get your law degree? The same clown college. You got that suit. Yeah. Say, so, hey, Judge Papadonian, seeing thinks I'm a snazzy dresser. Did, did Hank really think that was a good insult? Like, no. like even even for Hank's standards, like you got to think he said that. I was like, oh man, that came out really lame. <laughs> <laughs> we play laser tag in that. No, that was pretty fun. <laughs> <clears throat> that's a good call i like that uh my my uh my pink man stick man is uh peter the therapist oh good call yeah because uh, imaginary people are always i mean he's great he's great yeah. i mean David, in some ways David you could say Maurice, you could yeah. say the 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 stick man of this episode is ted again um because no it, it's it's the gift that keeps on giving right that, every time that bag. every time it comes like that whole situation comes back up. Ted needs to be mentioned in the stick man award because I mean, no, no stick manery has had more like reverberations in this show than, than that of, of Benneke. So his prowess is legendary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. now everything is stiff. So who, who knows what's going on uh, okay. now, but Touché. good one. You're welcome. Best new face. Hey, that's Danny Trejo. I mean, I think there's there there's a, there's a couple options, but clearly one kind of got to go with Declan. Declan. Uh, played by a Louis Ferreira, uh, this random guy who apparently runs the Phoenix Meth uh, Empire uh, that Mike and Jesse meet out in the middle of the desert somewhere. I've seen this guy before. Oh, you have. What have you seen him in? Saw four. <laughs> He was in the opening kind of like like pre soft four like tag of the, the 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 movie and his character comes back to play a pivotal role at the end of the film too. So oh. yeah, that's and then apparently he showed up in like uh what is that show? SWAT my wife watches. Oh shows up for like nine episodes of that. But. 
Okay. I don't know. But yeah, that's the only thing I've really seen him in is that soft work. Yeah, he feels like one of those like in between guys, right? He's not Tuco, right? But he's also not Gus. He's not squeaky clean. He's not a lunatic. He's somewhere in the middle. He's just a good, solid businessman, but you look at him and realize there's something slimy. And that he's he's a good businessman, but it might be meth. <laughs> so, I, 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 how I look at it, it, he's Mike for Phoenix. That's how I kind of drew the comparison. Like, there has to be, I don't got the vibe that that's the big boss guy because I, I just didn't get that kind of vibe from him. Uh, but maybe that's just like, that's what Mike, that, that's his connection to this other guy. Because even Declan says, well, I have to go talk to my people to see if we can, we can probably get the cash together. Oh, that's a, good, that's a good point. And if, if he was like the big, big guy for that branch, he didn't have to go talk to other people getting the cash. He's just get the cash. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I would equate him to being like a Mike. That's the situation. I like that. Did you have anybody else or is that who you had down to? That's who I had to. And I made the soft four connection there. And I, I think he's playing, he's, he's primarily a TV actor as well. He was on a lot of TV. He was in the taken TV show. I was oh, like, okay. watching and uh, I think SWAT was his most recent thing as well. But he had a lot of TV. I think his he had to go a long way to find a movie role on that uh, filmography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than software. Yeah, other than software, of course. All right. Classic. The old Joe Gomi minor character of the episode is who? Judge Papadonium. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great, uh, it's one of the great uh, non-scene side minor characters. It's the Hank Mardukas of the episode. Uh, Hank Mardukas? Yeah, uh, it's one of the great like mentioned names. Great being call never... out! Great call out! How was I've... he not nominated for a Pino? Hank Mardukas. Uh, Hank Mardukas should have been nominated. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would have been ridiculous. Anyway, uh, we'll cut that out later. Uh, no, leave that in. Leave it in. Uh, <laughs> Judge pa- 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 Papadonium. Uh, it's a great, it's a great shout. Like even she, even Gomi says a comment about about the, the judge too. He's like, oh, she's he's something of rather. I can't remember exactly the, the, the verbiage that he uses, but apparently he's not some made up judge, or she's not some made up judge. So they've heard of this judge before, but we never. I don't think we'll ever see her. But at the same time, it's just a great name. Like it's a great one of the. It's a great last name, Papadonium, and I can actually pronounce it. So there we go. That that'd be a cool uh, a cool callback in Better Call Saul. Ooh, like that. How did he like, get to know Judge Papadonium? That would be good. All right, my my minor character of the episode is uh, Kaylee Airman Trout. Um, she can climb one hell of a tree. Dude, I I was like, oh god, don't fall. That's how I was looking. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, the midlife crisis arm. moment when you're when you are a parent and you see the tree climbing and don't think oh look at that that's awesome and you start thinking don't fall don't break your arm yeah i used to be i used to climb trees and then yeah i didn't <laughs> I used to be one of those guys i used yeah. to be them mm-hmm. yeah it's a good yep. call but yeah okay she's been kind of around and so it's like it's time to finally shout out you know mike's granddaughter it's good so i think we used to be in the park yeah, we we shot it at the kids a couple of times. We shot it at Holly once, which now yeah, now her too. So yeah, you got to shot them out at least one time before the show ends. Good call. Mm-hmm. All right, the cow house dumbest thing said. I honestly didn't have my. I, I was not uh, on my computer here. There was some dumb things, especially at that dinner table. I was gonna say everything these, Jesse said at the <laughs> dinner table. These green beans are awfully good. Yeah, they're Albertson brand. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I think that's no, everything green, Jesse green said. Green beans are off, or yeah, off the, you put the slivered almonds in there. It's it's great. I, how'd you make them? They're Albertsons. Oh, <laughs> good work on your shopping then. Uh, <laughs> and, then and then the other one, I have, a couple more I have written down that he he goes well. These green beans are our choice. Like that, just the way he says that is just great. And then he goes, yeah, I I usually end up eating a lot of frozen food. Um, and, but like what happened to truth and advertising, man, like 
you look at the package like, yeah, I want to eat that lasagna. And then you pull it out of the microwave and the, the cheese is all like, it looks like a, it's like eating a scab. It's, it's like call. gross. It's like, and like, yeah, nothing, nothing like, nothing says appetizing, like starting talking about eating scabs at the dinner table. It's like, oh, how, how's the business going? I hear, I hear you. It's, it's. You you got it working like a machine. Well oiled. Like, like well oiled. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know that just the way he put it, like you don't put well oiled after the machine. After. You put it before. <laughs> and, and that's when she's like, Oh, did you tell him about my affair too? And, uh, um I'll shut up now. <laughs> okay, so this awkward dinner scenes. This reminded me of like Oh Brother Where Art Thou and Tim Blake Nelson. They're like eating that stew. It's like their stew's awfully good. It's like, oh, this ho- horse was trying to turn at it. Put her down last Thursday or whatever. And they're like, just, they're eating in silence. And Tim Blake Nelson's just like making side talk and just making it aw- more awkward. It's, it's that's the movie. It's, about that's the horse. what it kind of reminded. What was that? Yeah, that's the movie about the horse. Oh, see, there we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good call. That's a good callback. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything else out, outside of the uh, yeah. There's outside of the dinner scene because it, it's just so. Whenever rich. he throws in the word "yo," I think he threw the word "yo" in a couple times, but very subtly. It's I think like he called Pod accent. Hitler at one point, which was which was pretty good. Yeah, he said I can't remember what he, how he said, but yeah, he's called him Hitler. Yeah, I, let's see if I've got it in my notes here. Uh, da, 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 <laughs> that's what <laughs> he goes as soon as he walks out that dude whack job <laughs> <laughs> that's <too good. laughs> like, and then it's like okay okay we don't know what would have happened yeah we don't know because ricky hitler shot him <laughs> yeah that's it ricky <laughs> yeah, we don't know he was waving at us as what, what what's with the uncle in prison connections bs intimidation tactics <laughs> yeah. Uh Ricky Hitler. Uh it's a good nickname for uh for Jesse Plemons. It's kind of what I mean, all right. Uh Todd grows up to be uh Jesse Plemons character in Civil War. That's my that's my conspiracy theory. It's not a bad that's not a bad one. Could be could be Pino, his Pinot Nom too. We'll we'll see it. Only we'll time see. will tell. All right. Any problems, anything outdated? I really wanted to pick apart the Albertsons theory. I researched that shit. I looked on the map where the White's house were at. I found the actual location of where they filmed the, and I think it can't be an Albertsons near that place. No, it's a block away. A block an away from that house block, is a, Al- an Albertsons away. Uh, around the corner from that, there's a Walmart, and around the corner north of it, north uh, west of it, there's a natural groceries. Wow. So there's like their organic grocery store, Northwest, south of the address is the Albertsons and Southwest is the Walmart. So I really wanted to pick a part there has, can't be an Albertsons. That right off Negro Royal Lane, huh? Well, the actual street, I I, I was going off the actual street. I think it's the actual street, isn't it? Uh, Like that's like the actual address to that house. No, the, the actual address is 828 Piermount Drive, Northeast oh. Piermount. Not not Negro a Royal Lane. But, yeah, they yeah, but same time. I that's the address. Go 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 uh ding dong ditch that guy's house. Oh, I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure uh-huh. it's happened. Because everything everything is in the ABQ that they that they hey. film at here. Um okay. I didn't really have any flaws or anything or anything outdated oh, except I did have um, some else to me. Uh, well, so the, there was a reference that Saul made, and Saul makes a lot of random references, and there are a lot of old school references, and I usually get them. But uh, when he is talking to Mike after they give the restraining order, and it's like it's a hell of a gamble, yeah, it worked. But now, now that now Schrader's got a hard on that's reached Uncle Milty proportions. I'm like, yeah, don't get that. What is that reference to? Like, I you've passed us now, Saul. Yeah, you have you have your your knowledge. Have we researched that? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what that is referencing. I'm Hold sure on. it's something Uncle... you don't really want to know. Uncle well, Milty. 
M I M I L T I E. That's how I get my my good uh my good notes as I have subtitles on the whole time. <laughs> Milton Burley. He's a comedian. Milton Burl. Yeah, that's what yeah, Milton Burl. Okay. Uncle Milty. And yeah, that's what that's the reference. Also so known as Uncle Milty is the person. Okay, hold on. They're always pop culture references, so it doesn't surprise me that he's referencing. Yeah, that's Burley. that's who it is. Uncle Milty, the first inductee into the International Comedy Hall of Fame. There you go. Okay. Right on. Apparently he was a stick man. Um Yeah. Yeah, that's that's another one. That's that that was probably the one of the choice. That's who we that's who we should have gone with for sticking. Yeah, good call with low hanging fruit there. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, oh, there yeah, was something more. else too. Uh, Walter Walter White is basically MacGyver because uh, him thinking about that coffee pot and like like his, his teeth. Oh yeah, that's what I forgot too. It, it, minor characters. Walt's teeth is yeah because. Without his teeth, if he had dentures, there's no way he's cutting through that. <laughs> uh, you gotta say it. So make take care of your teeth, kids. Uh, so yeah, he's definitely MacGyver, and he was he withstood some pain there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, his heart. Yeah, I, like ugh. his his wrist is burnt. Yes, it is. Okay, midlife crisis moment. Oh yeah, grocery store food sometimes is the best option. Like the pre-cooked dinners, it just sometimes it's like oh, I just don't feel like cooking. Long day at work. Uh, we're we're gonna act like we're eating healthy. We're gonna get some like green beans and some steak. I don't think that steak was ever that. That's definitely not the steak that was cooked at that Albertsons. But yeah, yeah, that that was a little far fetched. No one ate it though, so maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was just it just looked like a brick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. I, I had, a you know, filling the awkward silences. However, I'm actually okay with awkward silences. Um, reminiscing about what could have been, like, that's Ooh, always, yeah. like, that's like call. going back and, and thinking about your regrets. Um, regrets. and then, uh, the, the, but then the other one that I really liked was going back to the conversation about what to do with Todd. And you could tell none of them liked their choice. And uh, just like you have, you're you know you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And you don't know what, and none of the options look good. And it reminded me of a quote from another Brian Cranston role from uh, Argo, when he goes to his higher ups and says, "This is our least worst idea." Um, <laughs> and I feel like that was that was what they settled on there. This is the least worst idea. It's a good call. Mm -hmm. All right, LVP. I don't like it. I don't like this one at all. Why would he zip tie him? Like one zip tie? You think the guy doesn't have handcuffs? Like, there's got to be a better idea. He zip tied him. You didn't think he'd like get like a? Where was Bill yeah. Burr? Where was Bill Burr to watch this guy? Oh uh, yeah, just get some QB in there. He had a, uh, a zip tie. Handcuffs can be picked. The zip ties can be burnt. Well, yeah, but. I, I yeah, I don't think he saw necessarily saw him going that far. Yeah, that is true. Self inflicted. My LVP is the DEA. Yeah, not um, bad. And uh, yeah, they apparently don't communicate with each other. By the way, either you notice that? Mm -hmm. Comey's like knocking on the window and he get freaking startled. The guy watching with the binoculars. He's like, "Oh crap! I didn't even know you were coming." It's in the neighborhood. Gomi Gomi looks pretty incompetent in this episode. Um, MVP. Of the episode, Jesse, <laughs> he's the only one with compassion of anything, and and he definitely gave us the best laughs in a while. He's the, he's the normal person, like he, but he's starting to reach a point where he's like the audience in every scene. It's like, well, maybe the voice of reason and actually talk like a normal human being because nobody else is going. Yeah, I thought for a second he was going to say something of like come up with the, the the plan when uh. I'm out, Walter. You can't be out. You're you have to be in. And then uh, they were zooming in on Jesse, like, oh, here's where Jesse comes with the plan they don't listen to. And he's like, nah, I'm out too. He says, I'm retiring. I'm retiring or something. I'm Jesse says he's retiring. 
I, some for some reason that feels like it needs it's, it needs to be switched. My MVP, the tarantula lives. Well, oh, yeah, that's a good call. Um, now, like I I forgot uh, that he pulls that out of the bag. It's like, oh, he kept the tarantula, yay! Because he's a thief and he has tokens of all his crimes. <laughs> I want. I mentioned that I had the trench the down, but I didn't couldn't find it in. So I'm glad you mentioned it. Oh, yeah. we're going there. Oh going yeah, there. He, he's oh. a serial killer, man. He's definitely killed before. Obviously, I agree. Uh, Todd agrees with you. So thanks, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Takes one to know one. Okay. <laughs> takes a Todd to know a Todd. Is that what you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's get into uh, our Walter White body count now. Let's do it updated uh before we talk about what's happening next so our walter white body count is at one amelia one crazy eight one ken wins car one custodian's career one tuco hideout one lock one uneaten burrito one paper towel holder Rot. one backdoor to jesse's house one love of jesse's life a few burned hundred dollar bills one pepperoni pizza one career in education one meth making rv one beginning of a galeful friendship, one fly, two kid killing drug dealers, one Gale Bedecker, one fateful bottle of wine, three laundry worker jobs, one Walter Jr. dream car, one Pinkman living room, one great aunt Burgett, yep. one secret underground meth lab, one Gale special coffee maker, two nameless henchmen, one Tyrus, one Hector Salamanca, one Gustavo Fring, one room full of evidence using magnets, bitch. A few, or a, a few, a bunch of insects, one sanity of Skylar White, one kid on a dirt bike, and one zip tie around his wrist. There we go. And the Jesse Asket count remains at nine and a half. I forgot to do the math on this, but let me do it really quick here. I kind of feel like there's a missed opportunity. I would love to see Jesse Plemons and Aaron Paul take a fight at each other. That would be, that'd be jesse plemons has a, a higher ass kicked count now than uh jesse because uh or sorry todd has a higher ass kicked count than uh jesse at this point because he's been on less episodes and has got punched in the face so it, more more uh more ass kicks per capita you could say. Yeah, that's with a word yeah yes all right so we got two episodes until until this uh this halfway point of the season so in the small uh, in the more recently thing that happened in this episode which we didn't even address the conversation between Marie and Skylar is where we're going with this okay mm, okay Hank's going to find something on episode 8 like i think there's something cuz obviously now he can't follow Mike so he has to go to somebody else i would say right so who that is, don't know quite yet. So I, I think the natural progression is he can't follow Mike, but there obviously he, why would he do this restraining order thing? Just makes himself look suspicious, right? Um, and kind of a, like you said, a douchebag move. So Hank will, <coughs> Hank and Gomi are gonna go to a different person and um, go from there. Or wait, tw maybe we go 24 hours after the next episode and they're back on them and they 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 have somebody else to, I don't know. Somehow they're, they're going to move on to the next person and try to maybe find something maybe by episode eight because, you know, Hank's still on the job. And I feel like also, I think Je the Jesse stuff is probably still on the table. And also Hank, or um, Walt uh, Heisenberg, rather, his plan is going. We're gonna go see him against Declan for a couple episodes, maybe. And I think maybe their their meeting will be interesting, maybe fatal. Who knows what could happen? Uh, yeah, that's. I I don't I don't know what world we really live in after episode eight quite yet. I think the next two episodes would probably be the two more pivotal episodes of. This first half, obviously, you would have to have a really big, like, thing that happens before you go into the next half of the season. But I feel like there's also could be a world where we have a good little, little semi closure to it, to like the first half where it's like, okay, we're out of the water, and then the next half kicks in. It's like, no, you're not. Could be interesting, and that's where we see that second half is where we're like we see the downfall of 
Walter and Heisenberg or some, something of that nature. Uh, but let's, uh, let's keep a small scale at this moment. Let's just focus on the last two episodes. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't, I don't know how accurate any of that would be, but uh, I think Hank is Hank needs to figure out. He needs to get some uh, news and he may not like the news that he finds at some point. Bummer. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Well, it, yeah, there's that. I, that. You got some good thoughts. You got some good thoughts. That's all yeah. I'll say. Well, we're good. Don't say much. Appreciate it. I won't. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our uh, little longer episode than normal, but I think it was worth, uh, you know, talking about. There's some really great stuff in this episode here, and it's getting us more excited to see what future Breaking Badness happens. And uh, I'm really looking forward to breaking down more Breaking Bad. Break down a Breaking Bad in the future uh, next week. We will be breaking down episode seven. So make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe here on your podcast and also check out the youtube video feeds as well uh well without further ado terry unless you have anything else what do we do let's do it sit and spin